piece of art can lift your spirits during the dull grays of winter, and it can also cost you a lot of money, but it doesn't have to. Christian Dare joins us now to show us how to make our own large-scale art on a budget. I love large-scale art, Christian. It looks so good. So how can we make the galleries jealous with our masterpiece? <laughs> Yeah, so I love large scale art also. It's a really big trend right now with the sort of maximalism we're seeing in interiors. And it's all about making these oversized 48 by 48 inch pieces. This is the one that inspired it. And if you go to home stores, they're like two, three, four hundred dollars. I made this one for under forty dollars. So it's really easy wow. and you don't even need to be an artist to make it. Although I think we're all artists in our own way. Yes, we are. And listen, you're saying two, three, four hundred dollars, even two, three, four thousand dollars. If you're getting an original piece of art and that's the size. So I think it's really nice that we might be able yeah. to, to do this at home ourselves with a little bit of guidance from you. This is what you need uh, to follow along with this project to get everything you need together or, you know, make sure you've got this episode recorded so you can go back to it. And Christian, where do we start? We start with our frame. So if you've got an old oversized canvas, you've already got a frame that you can wrap. Now I know a lot of us probably don't just have canvases kicking around, like <laughs> don't cover over kids art, pick something new. So you can actually make your own frame. It's really quite easy, even if you're not a woodworker, because I am not a woodworker. Um, you can go to your home store and you're actually gonna get some two by twos. So you can get them to pre-cut it. And what you wanna do is for my example, I'm doing a 24 by 24. So I got two pieces at 24 and two pieces at 21. Because I don't know if you know this, Tracy, but a two by two is really a one and a half by one and a half. So mm. like they're cheating us on wood or something. <laughs> so that will make the perfect square. If your home renovation store won't cut it for you, I always say, just pick up a simple miter box with a saw. You can do it by hand. We're only doing five cuts and I'm not even doing angle cuts. We're just doing straight on cuts. So it's really easy for anyone to do. So we're gonna need to stick it together with some screws. Okay, well, let's talk about the screws you need to uh, put this together. Is there a specific type you need to use? I mean, there's not really a specific type. I know the word workers will tell us there is. <laughs> you should be using wood screws. It will make your life a little bit easier. You also, because it's a one and a half, a two and a half, two by two, one and a half by one and a half, you want to make sure your screws are at least two and a half inches long so you can screw in tightly. So through the magic of TV. Beautiful. If you also find it really tricky to do your screws in the side and make a square. You can actually pick up little L brackets that you can just screw into every single corner. And then you've got a perfect square. You don't have to stress about anything. And the brackets usually come with their own screws, so you're done. So next, we need to wrap this guy. We need to pick a fabric. So for your fabric, I mean, for mine, I opted for an old curtain I wasn't using anymore, and I didn't think it made a good dress. <laughs> I mean, it could. So I'm gonna cut it up and use it for my art. You could also use maybe like old Hawaiian shirt that your husband keeps wearing for 20 years that you don't like. Mm -hmm. You could use it on this. He'll have no idea where it went. So it's a great way to recycle old materials that you already at home and it will save you some money. Yeah, he'll have no idea where it went so until he sees it on the wall. <laughs> Although, to be honest, depending on your husband, he might be like, that's a nice piece of fabric. Where did you find it? <laughs> he may not even know. You're right. <laughs> so I always say, <laughs> pre-cut your fabric so I've cut a square just a little bit bigger because we want to be able to wrap the sides so I know we've probably shown this a million times on TV but it's the same sort of principle as if you're uh, sorry changing your fabric on the seat of a chair you're gonna start in the middle on one side then the other side pull it really nice and tight so you're getting your staples in and then you're just gonna work your way across each side and then we flip right and then you're gonna pull these sides tight because you want to end up with a frame, da 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 da, magic of TV again, that is nice and tight, so you're not getting any wrinkles in your fabric. Next, neon light is the trick for this guy. So, I've got a bunch of different neon lights. There's a little cloud I picked up. I actually found all these on Amazon. You get three for like under $20, so it's really affordable. I think we're gonna opt for some lips today, Trace. Love it. So, here's the trick. Putting them on, I don't know what you'd stick it to, so I've got a little trick for you. When you get your wood cut, you wanna add a fifth piece. So a piece the same size as your width that you're gonna put, basically, you would say, Christian, why isn't it in the middle? It does add extra support, but what you wanna do is you wanna make sure, based on where your lips go, that when you hang it, it makes them centered. 
Mm. So I position my wood just slightly above the middle. So then when we go around, it's going to be centered for you, right? Yeah, that's good. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't love the idea of a giant cord hanging down the front of my art. Mm -mm. So we're going to cut a small hole, tiny, tiny hole in your fabric. Now, don't be scared. It's not going to look horrible. You want to make sure you're grabbing a really, really sharp, sharp knife. And then I always pick, you want to pick near the end of where your cord is that kind of hides behind your lips. So you can see I've got this tiny little hole here. I added in two little finishing nails just to put my lips on. And then one of my tricks on the back is to make sure it's nice and clean is you can actually just take a little piece of packing tape, duct tape, scotch tape, any sort of tape you want. And then I just tape the back of the hole. So then from the front, it makes sure that it's nice and sealed and not gaping at all. And then you got your lip art. So in real life, um, like we just saw you do that kind of in real time, which is amazing with a little bit of prep. How long did that, did that big piece with the banana uh, take you? The big piece with the banana actually only took me about 25 minutes. Oh. You got all your materials ready. It's really actually quite quick. That is so good. Okay, so this is great. You decide the size you want. You go get the wood that makes the scent make most sense for you. You get the fabric, maybe even from around the house. Maybe it's old drapes. And you can have your steal own. Steal a shirt. <laughs> yeah, steal a shirt. An old, you know, old linen that you don't want anymore. And you can have your own custom art. I think that is very cool, Christian. You always have the best ideas. Thank you for that.